Welcome everyone to our daily Forex market analysis call for um, in preparation for June 14th, 2017. So just a quick disclaimer before we get started. If I can get my screen to move, here we go. Just a quick disclaimer before we get started. This is for educational purposes only. Trading is a risky business, so please be careful with your money. And if you have questions about your individual investment needs, I recommend you talk to your investment advisor. So let's start off by taking a look at our Forex factory. And in terms of today, um, June 13th here, we did have the CPI number for British pound and the number was quite positive. The inflation is almost at 3%. So this is um, even more positive than what was expected. As a result of that, we did see the British pound go up. And another development in the in the on the on the UK front was that they were uh, Prime Minister Theresa May was holding meetings in order to um, form a government in order to uh, form the majority. As a result of that, the meetings were positive. Looks like they're going to form a majority government soon. As a result of that, um, we also, or that was another reason why we saw a lift up in British pound. So that is on the British pound front. Other than that, uh, we didn't have, you know, that important uh, kind of data that come out. So prior to that, we did have dollar CAD. Dollar CAD has dropped quite a bit. And one of the reasons it dropped was because there were comments from Bank of Canada um, saying that they are they are looking at the monetary policy and they're looking to see if the, the, the stimulus is still needed in the economy or not. As a result of that, now uh, the market has started um, a sort of pricing in an interest rate hike by Canada. So that's something, or at least cutting back of the monetary stimulus. So when the monetary stimulus is cut back or interest rates are raised, that is positive for that currency. So already we are seeing that pricing in for the Canadian dollar. As a result, Canadian dollar um, has gone up, which means dollar CAD has dropped. So we'll take a look at that as well. So that was probably one of the biggest moves uh, for today. Big thing for coming up for June 14th, tomorrow will be FONC. So pretty much all the market participants are expecting Fed to raise rates. As we can see here, current rates are interest rate is 1% and we are looking at a hike of um, 25 basis point points. So now why are we not seeing the US dollar go up aggressively? So anytime interest rates go up, the currency goes up in value. But right now, the reason they're not going up is because market is expecting a dovish hike. So watch out for that. Um, what that means is that um, Fed may say, well, we're going to raise rates, but we are not that positive on the economy or we, the growth uh, prospects for the economy are not that great or the data is coming in soft or they may say the inflation is not at target. So any of those comments will be negative for US dollar. Yeah, so this month's or this tomorrow's Fed interest rate decision or FOMC meeting is more critical than the previous FOMC meetings. Um, and one of the reasons for that is because we did see a rate hike last time and it was a dovish rate hike as well. So after the interest rate hike, um, first of all, prior to the hike, US dollar was doing what it's doing right now. It wasn't going up uh, and Fed had to really talk it up at that time. Pretty much every Fed official came out and said, hey, we're gonna do an interest rate hike. We're gonna do an interest rate hike. But after the hike, US dollar actually dropped. And the reason uh, was because it was dovish. So their commentary was dovish. And the reason this one is even more critical than the previous one is because some of the data hasn't been as strong as it was previously. And um, also Fed said that this year they are going to do three interest rate hikes. They have already done one. So this is the second one. Um, and the next one, that's what market will be looking to see when and if they are going to do the third hike this year. So that's why this is very critical because this will be the second hike. Um, and if 
Fed feels does not feel as optimistic about the economy that would signal that signal the market at least that they're likely not going to do another hike which would again be dovish so going into tomorrow there isn't a whole lot going in, going for us dollar at the moment the only way us dollar will actually go up is if the commentary out of the Fed is positive, the interest rate hike is pretty much all priced in at the moment. So um, if interest rates get hiked, I do not expect US dollar to go up drastically. Um, it, it may go up, but not by much. But if they do not, um, if the interest rates do not go up, or if the commentary is dovish, that means the US dollar is will fall. So there's more likelihood of US dollar dropping after a dovish hike as opposed to it jumping up. So commentary from Fed is very, very important. Okay, no problem. Um, all right, so other than that, we have CPI, which is inflation numbers and core CPI inflation numbers. Again, see how this is at 0.2%, whereas we were looking at British pound, it was at 2.9%. So that's very good inflation rate. Um, a Fed wants this number to be around 2%. So we are very far from that. So if this number is negative, that would just put a negative sort of, uh, um, uh, impact will have a negative impact on the US dollar, but we're not likely to see a big move in pretty much any US dollar crosses ahead of FOMC. So tomorrow, the market may just be range bound in the market, and we may not be able to get a trade uh, during the New York session just because markets will, they tend to die down. Even today, liquidity was quite low um, this morning. So that's why we didn't really have much of the moves and the moves, I'll show you the moves that we had were very, very thin liquidity moves because pretty much everybody's sitting aside waiting for Fed, um, Fed statement to see what they're going to do. So that's a big thing tomorrow. Uh, for Aussie, we do also have employment change and GDP numbers for a New Zealand dollar. Again, these, these are important data points so that will have an impact on these two currencies. But the major thing by far would be um, FOMC. And then going into Thursday, this is where things are still going to continue on. We have uh, Swiss National Bank as well as Bank of England. So a lot of um, central banks this, this week or in the next couple of days. So watch out for those for sure. Here is our dollar CAD. We were looking at, this week we were looking at dollar CAD uh, being bearish and um, I just did not expect it to go down this much. So that was because of Bank of Canada uh, comments that came out from Bank of Canada. So this dropped um, a lot and yesterday we were looking for it to go down into 132.20 area which it did. So what happens here? So this is a critical area. Now going into FOMC um, again we could get a range bound um, sort of market ac across the US crosses or but we are still bearish on this and the only thing that will really change uh, things would be um, the FOMC. Right, if there's an interest rate hike and it's uh, it's hawkish, their commentary is hawkish, hawkish, then dollar CAD will jump up. But other than that, based on the daily close, this is quite bearish, looks quite bearish. We are into important support level though. We haven't been here since April, so it's been a few months since we have touched this level. And last time we were here, price bounced off of that level. So this is an important support and resistance level. As a result of that, we could bounce off of that. Um, in terms of where we are likely to go, this is, uh, this is where we are sitting. The way this looks right now, we are likely to see a bounce back up. And in terms of the pullback, we could get a pullback into this R1 level here. That is a good, looks like a good pullback level, which is 13300. Um, and again, if the FOMC comes out hawkish, in that case, we could fill all of this. This whole entire move could get filled all the way up to 13470. So that's, of course, something we'll have to watch out for. At the moment, though, we are bearish based on the daily close here. 
but keep in mind important support level which means it could bounce off of this level and go higher so um, those are so the next target here to the downside would be 131 60 level right into here the base of this candle um, this inefficient candle big candle here so we're looking for that to get filled so 131 60 would be the uh, the level okay so moving on to euro here so euro is sideways for the last couple of days last three days really we have it's been sideways and we are just coiling right now so as you can see the highs are getting um, lower but the lows are getting higher as well so we are just consolidating sideways at this point it is going to break out to one side or another we can't really have the price consolidate so much without moving somewhere so this is what i mean as we can see see how price is going into this um, pennant um, in this case so we are very 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 sideways at the moment so we are going to continue um, to see that likely into fomc tomorrow but it hasn't, um, so it's still holding the range. So we will continue to trade this as a range bound market. The first target here to the downside would be 111.60 level here, bottom of this pin. And then the second one would be 1100. And the type of behavior that we are likely to see here, we could see one of these, or if it drops lower, um, then we may see uh, that type of behavior. So let's say the CPI numbers come in really strong. We could see Euro drop, but not really looking for it to drop below 1.1100 1, 1 prior to FOMC. After that, depending on how FM, FOMC goes, we are either likely to see this go up, and in that case, the target will be 1.1290 area, the top here, um, or if it breaks down, we are likely to see the break of 11100 in which case the next target to the downside would be somewhere in here which is 11020 so those will be the two targets uh, for but for now we're going to trade this as a range bound lower bound of the range would be 11160 as the first and 11100 as the second target so looking at the one hour this is where we are as we can see pushed up came back down and now we are smack in the middle um, so as we can see, our uh, pivot points are also sh showing a range bound market. It went from usually in a range bound market, when you look at your pivot points, you the move that we uh, normally see would be from S1 to R1 and back down. So that's where we are going. And as you can see, the S1 and R1 are approximately at the same level. So we're just uh, sideways and we are looking for this 11160, which is our S2 level, bounce off that level, or um, if it goes higher, we're looking for it to come down, um, basically stay within the range. So we're looking, we're now looking for a break of 11290 before FOMC. Pound here, um, we are, we could not see, we could not get a break of this level here, which was um, 126.30ish area. We, can, we did not see price break that. Instead, it pushed back up. So now we are in a range bound scenario in this as well. Uh, 127.70 area, this is a, an important resistance level. And I'm not looking for this to break unless we get positive numbers for British pound or we get negative numbers for the US prior to FOMC. So we may just see price go sideways ahead of the announcement. And in terms of our one hour chart, that's where we are. This is the 127.70 level. It could, um, so it looks like it wants to roll back down now this is getting to be a compressed move and now it's starting to roll down so in this case I would look for price to come back into this 126 37 level this kind of level here and um, we are likely to see a bounce off of that level not looking for a break here prior to the Fed announcement then we will see what happens but again if it price comes towards the top here we are likely to see a bounce to the downside as well and I'm expecting the price to just sort of go sideways it could there is one other level that we will have to watch which will be this one right here so one 
2800 level, which is this support and resistance level. So it's slightly higher, slightly past um, R1 here. So that will be the next level. So if it does manage to go up higher, that will be the level to watch. But for now, the first um, resistance level would be 127.70. As we can see from the daily, this is a very important level. And uh, right here as well. So once uh, price had trouble going through it the first time, once it went through it, it did not come back down till now. So that's why it's so important. So we're looking for price to just go sideways here for dollar, pound dollar. Dollar CAD we did. Now let's take a look at Aussie. Aussie here, um, we saw price go up and then um, pulled back a little bit. Now it's gone up. But in terms of our daily, very, very, oops, um, it's sideways. It hasn't really done much. Okay, so that's our daily. So last few days, it's just held there, hasn't broken the level. So in this case, the resistance level would be 75, 67 area right over here. And um, it looks like we may see it push down or it could go test the high again. And then we may see that bounce. So not really looking for an exit. Um, not looking for a big break of that level, aggressive break of that level, uh, we could get this type of a move. Price may go test that. Once the price comes into 75, 67 level, I would be watching that level for a reaction. If it does go higher, then we are just looking at 75, 89 or about 7,600 level, but not, again, not looking for a huge move. We are at 75, 37 at the moment. It could go to 7,600, but not um, much higher than that, as we can see for the last few days. So one, two, three, four, five days now, we haven't broken that level. So it's a strong level and uh, we may not be able to see a break of that aggressively. So even though dollar CAD has dropped quite a bit and it looks like it wants to drop, Aussie hasn't been as strong. It, it has strengthened, it hasn't come down, but it hasn't, pushed up as much either. So um, Aussie in itself is not as strong. As a result of that, we are looking for price to just stay there. So if, if FOMC goes against the dollar, yes, this would be uh, Aussie is likely to break up higher then. So in that case, all the bets are off. We are looking for pretty much everything to go up against the dollar. So I would be, uh, would be looking at Euro, Pound, Aussie, New Zealand, all of those to go up, dollar CAD to go down. If it's a dovish hike, um, yeah, so all those crosses, then we would be we would see a break of the 7,600. So in that case, if we were to trade that, this is the kind of scenario we would be able to see. Price would go through there, pull back, and then look for it to go up higher. And in that case, the outside target would be 77.50. Likely won't get there in one day, but that will be the next target up once the 7,600 uh, level is broken. So that's the type of move we are looking at. For now though, as we can see, it's holding this level. So that it's, it's a range bound for the last few days. It's range bound. So at this point, I'm looking for it to stay range bound or even maybe come down a little bit, but not really go anywhere aggressively at the moment. So if it goes to the top 7,600 or 7,570 level, then we could look for a move back down. New Zealand dollar here, um, the daily. This one is, um, it's, it's more bullish than um, our Aussie is. We are holding, so we're, if we take a look at Aussie here, see how we have the red candles and small candles, but we are not big pins here. Whereas when we look at New Zealand here, 
we are seeing green candles. There is one red candle, but it has a large pin to the downside. Uh, so it's not as bearish. Then we have an engulfing candle. Based on this, um, the target here would be 72.45. So this is bullish and we could see a move to the upside here. So the first target here will be 72.50. Again, not looking for a big move prior to FOMC. Once we get FOMC, if it's a dovish hike, then we could see one of these moves again and the target the first target will be into this level which is 7345 level and then 7380 level which is out here so that's the kind of move we may see if it's a dovish hike however if it's um, if the commentary is positive we could just see price uh, maybe kind of crawl back up there and then drop if it's good for the US dollar, if it's a bullish or a hawkish hike, then we're likely to see this drop. So at this point, based on the daily close, um, this is bullish and the next target will be 72.45. And if you take a look at our four hour chart, see how it is getting compressed, no doubt about that, but it is still stronger than Aussie. And here we are, very, very small move today. And um, right now it is pushing up higher. Dollar Cat is pushing lower. So this one is pushing up higher. So there's our target, which is right at R2. So 72.50-ish area would be our target to the upside. And that's where we'll have to watch how price reacts to this level. Um, normal reaction would be this. So it goes into that level and bounces off of that level. Um, unless something changes into the in the market but um, that's what I would be expecting prior to FOMC and then we'll have to re-evaluate. Eurocat has been um, very bearish for the last two three days it is bearish our target was 48.20 in this and that's where we got to the next level we'll have to watch for is 147.35 right into this this pin right here so right now it looks bearish um, and that's the level we'll be watching first thing though we need to be able to see a break of the of the lows here so 147.87 that level needs to break before it moves down but based on the daily close it looks bearish and the way it is moving right now it does look bearish it's holding below this um, that resistance, so 148.50-ish level, it's holding below that. If it continues to hold below that, we're likely looking for, um, we're, we're likely to see a move lower. So in this case, see, this is a bit of a pullback and then a move, a drop lower. So 147.35 would be a good level to aim for this one right here. So that is bearish Euro Aussie. Um, Euro Aussie has been um, sideways here. Nothing has happened. We are range bound because Aussie hasn't really moved anywhere. Whereas um, pound, sorry, Euro was sideways. So was Aussie today. So this is very much a range bound type of deal here. If it comes into 148, we're likely to see a bounce, which we have already seen a bounce. So if it comes into 149, 50 level here, we're likely to see a bounce back into the range um, till something changes. So there is Aussie news coming out tomorrow that will have an impact on this as well. Um, so we'll just have to keep an eye on it till something changes right now. Everything is pretty much sideways at the moment. So not, not the greatest pair to trade at the moment. Uh, pound New Zealand here, um, not much. We do have a bullish close for the day, but again, this will depend on, um, New Zealand is strong at the moment. So we could see a move to the downside. So that will be the, the resistance level 177.50 level and um, we are likely to see it go back down but I would just expect a sideways move in this as well till um, something changes again New Zealand dollar news New Zealand news, news coming out tomorrow GDP number which is very important so that will um, influence where this goes for now though it is range bound here we are um, it looks like it wants to move lower at this point. So the target to the downside will be this right here. So this 
target, 7,500. So that will be our target to the downside, 17,500. The yen crosses, um, anything pound-wise, we have um, a bullish move to the upside. I think we'll be range-bound for all of the pound crosses. So this one, we are into resistance here at 140.75 level, this right here. And once the price gets there, I am expecting it for it to move lower from there. So this could go up higher into 140. 74 this area right here 75 and then drop from there but that level should act as resistance so now do keep keep in mind um yen if us dollar has a dovish hike all yen crosses will likely drop so when us dollar drops yen goes up which means yen will strengthen, which means everything, all the crosses with the yen are likely to drop in that kind of scenario. So they tend to move in the opposite direction. When US dollar is strong, um, the yen tends to weaken because um, it's the, uh, the risk, one of the risk currencies. So you, if US dollar drops, yen will strengthen, which means all the yen crosses will drop. If all the US so U.S. crosses will go up, E.N. crosses will go down. And if it's the other way around, if they have, they have strong um, commentary or the comments are strong or hawkish, then all the U.S. crosses will drop and yen crosses will likely go up. So that's something to keep in mind. Dollar yen, though, um, we will have to... Um, you know what, if they do form a majority government uh, coalition tomorrow, yes, pound is likely to strengthen uh, based on that. So I would be watching the pound. Um, pound yen will then go up as well as pound dollar. Both of these are likely to go up then if they're able to uh, form the majority. All right, so that's all I have. Any other questions or anything else? Any other pair we need to look at? Okay, I will take that as a no. So we will wrap it up here.